Today we're going to be coding uh, the voice calculator. Uh, it is basically a conversational AI agent uh, similar to Alexa and Siri. Um, and what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to demo the final product so you have a sense what it's going to look like. So here I have a, um, a, a, a version of my app on my desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the speak button and ask a mathematical question. What is 73 times 5? The product is 365. What is 14 divided by 8? The quotient is 1.75. What is the sum of 83 and 156? The sum is 239. What's the difference of 87 and 45? The difference is 42. How are you today? I could not understand. Please ask me a multiplication or addition or subtraction or division question like what is 123 times 85? So as you can see, uh, the uh, voice calculator can understand basic mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. However, if you ask something else, uh, it is not within the realm of knowledge that this uh, conversational a a AI agent has. Thus, it responds uh, that it cannot understand what you're asking. open uh, the template for the voice calculator project so we can start our coding. So uh, I'm going to go to uh, projects. Uh, I'm going to import project AIA from my computer and I'm going to choose uh, the uh, project that is called voice calculator template. You should be able to uh, find this AIA file uh, via the links that I have provided. So let's open this and it's going to look uh, a lot like uh, what we have so far. However, if you look at the blocks, uh, you're going to notice that uh, not all the blocks uh, are filled. It is going to be our job to fill uh, these blocks. So uh, let us start by first of all examining the designer. Uh, here you see a uh, you know an, an icon of a robot etc. But then underneath that there is a speak uh, button. Uh, when we speak, when you click the speak button, this is the button that is going to initiate the process of extracting uh, the sentence that you are uh, uttering, and it's going to convert into text. Uh, underneath that is going to be a text uh, uh, label where uh, we're going to uh, display what the uh, voice calculator heard so that we could make sure that it heard uh, exactly what we uh, said uh, to the calculator. And then at the bottom is another label where we're going to have uh, the response of the calculator, which is uh, you know doing the operation with the numbers that you have specified. Uh, now, in terms of non-visible components, uh, it's important to note here that uh, we have a speech recognizer, which is going to uh, basically take our uh, speech and convert uh, e eventually to uh, text. And then we have a text-to-speech component, another in a non-visible component, uh, which is going to take the um, text that was written and uh, speak it uh, back. Alrighty, now let's start uh, with the coding and let's maybe start by examining uh, what we already have here. Uh, first of all, we have a global variable called numbers list. Uh, we initialize it with an empty list. Uh, this uh, list is eventually going to uh, contain all the numbers that are uttered by the user. Now underneath that you see multiplication intents. And these are all the symbols and words that can be used to uh, express a multiplication intent. So if the user wants to multiply two numbers, uh, you know, he can use uh, words like, what's the product of seven, uh, 7 and 18? 
or may say multiply you know 55 with 11 uh, what is 3 times 6 etc uh, but uh, the google speech recognizer is uh, quite clever when it uh, itself uh, realizes that you are about to uh, have a multiplication intent it might put any of these uh, preceding symbols there uh, an asterisk designating a multiplication symbol uh, an X, capital X, and then the multiplication symbol. So these are uh, all the ways that we can you know, specify how to uh, express a multiplication intent. Now, underneath that is a very important procedure that we're going to use. Uh, and let's go through this procedure step by step. Uh, first, it um, initializes the global uh, numbers list to uh, the empty list in case we use the calculator before and there are some other numbers there uh, extract numbers procedure initializes uh, the numbers list to an empty list and what it's going to do is uh, given a list it is going to uh, sorry given a sentence uttered by the user uh, it is going to extract all the numbers in that sentence and let me show this uh, whole process with uh, actually a quick uh, PowerPoint. So let's imagine that the user said something like, what is five times four? And uh, when you call the procedure, extract numbers on this sentence, what is five times four? Uh, what's going to happen is uh, it is first going to uh, create or initialize the number list to an empty list. And then it is going to uh, initialize a local variable word list. Uh, and what's going to happen is it's going to take the sentence that was given to us, which is what is 5 times 4, and it's going to split it at the spaces. So, you know, what, and then there's a space, is, what's, there's a space, 5, there's a space, uh, times, there's a space, 4. Uh, so all of these are going to be... Uh, put separately uh, as the items of a list. Then there's a for loop, and this for loop is going to go through each of these uh, 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 words that has been captured, and it's going to ask the question, is this word a number? And if it is a number, it is going to store it uh, in the list called numbers list. So let's see this in action. So uh, it's going to ask, is the word what a number? The answer is no, so you move forward. Uh, is the word is a number? No, it's not. And then when you come to five, yes, five is a number, and this number is going to be placed in the number list. And then you continue with the word times, it's not a number, and then the uh, number four appears, yes, it is a number, and then you're going to notice that the numbers uh, list has captured uh, two numbers from the sentence. These are going to be the numbers that we're going to be uh, operating on. Now back to the um, back to the coding, and uh, we'll uh, code the speak button in a second. Uh, actually, let's just uh, no, let's just finish that immediately. Uh, when the speech recognizer uh, has been clicked, what we would like to do is call the speech recognizer get text uh, procedure. So when the button has been clicked, uh, we're basically invoking the speech recognizer to go and uh, get the text that the um, user has uttered. Now, uh, this is going to take, take some time. Uh, because uh, it's going to go to uh, Google and it's going to be converted into text. Now, after the text uh, is received, uh, when speech recognizer dot after getting text procedure is going to be invoked. And then uh, let's see all the uh, code that is already there. Uh, first of all, it uh, places uh, to the user text label the result that has been returned. This is basically what uh, the uh, user has uttered. So, uh, you know, you press the button, uh, you speak something, and that speech is converted into text, and then it is pasted uh, where it says 
the user text label. So we assign uh, the, 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 the result to the user text label. Uh, next, we set the calculator text label, which is, let me show you again in the designer, which is right underneath where it says my response is. This is where the calculator is going to uh, give its response. Initially, it's going to say I could not understand because of the you know hundreds of questions you could be asking. Uh, the calculator is going to uh, recognize a small subset of them. So initially, let's just uh, give it uh, the assignment that it could not understand anything. Uh, then we call the extract numbers procedure, which we just described, and the result of that procedure acting uh, on the uh, result, uh, on the sentence uttered by the user, is that uh, it is going to fill the numbers list, which is right here, with all the numbers that it has encountered. Okay, and then we are now beginning to uh, make sense of the input. So first, uh, we have to make sure that the numbers list contain exactly two numbers, because all the operations we are talking about, plus, minus, uh, division, uh, uh, etc., these are all binary operations. They require two numbers uh, to be, you know, operated on, uh, you know, adding two numbers, multiplying two numbers, etc. Now, you see an if, a, a conditional statement here, if, and what it says is, if the result, meaning the sentence uttered by the user, contains any of the multiplication intents, which is all these uh, things here, then we have basically understood that the user wants to multiply two numbers. And what we do is we set the calculator text label, which was initially uh, assigned uh, to uh, I could not understand. Uh, we have it say the product is, and then we give the product of the first number in the numbers list and the second number in the numbers list. So this allows us to respond meaningfully when a multiplication intent has been uh, uh, noticed. Uh, we see that basically the multiplication uh, uh, operation uh, intent uh, is already coded for us, like what to do when uh, the user wants to do a multiplication. Now let's quickly test this uh, with our app. Uh, when I say, uh, what is 14 times 75? The product is 1,050. I get an answer, but if I said, what is 83 plus 45? I could not understand. It doesn't know how to respond. And the reason for that is, if you look at this conditional, we did not uh, create any kind of code to take care of uh, addition intent, uh, multiple, uh, sorry, division intent, or subtraction intent. And that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, so what I recommend is let's go back to uh, the multiplication intents. Let's um, right click on that and let's duplicate it. And uh, where it says uh, multiplication intents, let's change that to uh, addition intent. Okay? Uh, that way we'll now specify all the different ways uh, a, a user might be able to uh, express uh, a, a, an, a, an addition intent. So let's make this uh, a plus sign because uh, we have seen that uh, Google uh, Speech Recognizer uh, actually automatically converts um, uh, you know, plus to a plus sign. So let's get rid of these things. So let's think what are some ways we could have uh, addition uh, expressed. So for example, you know, you could just use the word add. Uh, you might say something like, you know, what's the addition of 5 and 3, etc. So let's have addition. Uh, let's have uh, the word sum, right? What's the sum of 4 and 5? Uh, what is 8 plus 3? So the word plus uh, is a good one. 
Uh, sometimes they say, we can say, uh, what's the total of four and five? So maybe have the word total also here. Um, there might be a few others, but this is probably plenty. Uh, you notice that there's an extra, uh, um, uh, you know, socket here. Uh, by going to this uh, blue gear here, you can remove that last item. So you don't have uh, anything uh, extra. Okay, so we have now our addition intents. And what we're going to do is we're going to now create code that deal with addition intents when the uh, user wants to do an addition what to do. Uh, we could do this actually quite easily by uh, duplicating existing code, um, but um, for the sake of just learning how to do this, let's actually get uh, this uh, addition intents uh, on our own. Let's, let's do the coding for addition uh, from scratch ourselves. Uh, clearly, there's a red block here, so it's a text block, and we're looking for contains uh, uh, contains any block, so we grab that. And then when you go to the menu here, one of the options is contains any. And then it says, uh, does the result contain? So we're going to go hover over the uh, parameter here called result. And we're going to click, uh, we're going to drag and drop it uh, into the first socket. And then uh, it says get multiplication intents. Instead of that, uh, when you go to uh, variables, you're going to now be able to see that there is addition intents. Okay, so we have our, uh, you know, else if part. Now, the second part is going to look a lot like what we have before, except instead of the word the product is, we're going to say the sum is. And instead of the multiplication symbol, we're going to have the addition symbol. So let's start creating that code. Uh, so let's go to calculator text label. So let's uh, get calculator uh, text label, um, the text of that, calculator uh, text label dot text. Okay, so we put it in here, and then uh, we're going to, so let's plug it in here. Uh, we're going to now get a join block, and uh, we're going to need uh, two uh, sockets, which, which is what you already have. And now we're going to say, uh, if it was a addition in 10, we're going to say the uh, sum is, and uh, it is an addition. So we go to uh, the math menu, grab the uh, plus sign, and uh, now we're going to uh, create these two uh, numbers. So it's going to be the first number from the numbers list added to the second number from the numbers list. So we're going to find where it says select list item, uh, list and index. So it is this uh, block right here. And uh, I might be able to just now duplicate this. I'm going to copy and paste. And then I'm going to copy and paste. So now we're going to be adding uh, these uh, two numbers. Uh, I can also copy and paste this whole block here uh, as long as I don't forget to change the second number to, uh, to number two. Okay. Uh, now you might wonder, this is now going out of the screen. You might wonder, like, how come this uh, multiplication here uh, has them neatly aligned in a vertical manner? Uh, if you right click on the blue block here, uh, one of the options is called external inputs. So when you do that, it basically collects them uh, and uh, makes the two uh, sockets uh, one under the other. Uh, if you want to go back to uh, what we had before, it's called uh, inline inputs. So you can do that, or you could have external inputs. It's a little bit, it looks a little bit neater. Now, uh, let us uh, refresh our um, companion and let us see what's going to happen if we want to do an addition. So, let me try first of all uh, a multiplication. What is 7 times 5? 
The product is 35. What is 83 times 4? The product is 332. Now let's try an addition. What is 42 plus 16? The sum is 58. What is 18 plus 5? The sum is 23. Great. Now, you're going to notice uh, at the bottom here when it's reporting, it says the sum is 23. Uh, we're missing a space there. So I'm going to go back into this uh, uh, this text box here, and I'm going to uh, this text block here, and I'm going to uh, put a space there. So that way it will uh, give us a uh, space. Now, I think you're beginning to understand uh, how this is going to continue. We basically need to do uh, subtraction and division in a very similar manner. So let me give you a little bit of a pause here, and uh, you could work on your own pace. Uh, why don't you uh, try that on your own, and then when we, when we get back, uh, we'll see quickly how to do this together. Thank you. Last part of the voice calculator tutorial, and I think you can guess where this is heading. Uh, we need to specify uh, intents for subtraction and division. So why don't we go back uh, to you know these uh, global variables, multiplication intents, uh, addition intents, and why don't we actually duplicate uh, one more time? So let's call that um, subtraction subtraction intents. And uh, instead of the plus sign, we put the minus sign. Instead of the word add, we have the word subtract. Uh, we have, instead of addition, we have subtraction. Uh, other words that imply subtraction is uh, the word minus, uh, the word uh, difference. They may say, what's the difference of 7 and 8? Uh, difference. Okay. Uh, I cannot think of any other, so I'm just going to get rid of this last uh, one here. And you know by now that if you go to the blue gear, you can remove that last socket. And this is what we have here for addition, subtraction. And why don't we also do the division here while we are at it so that um, we can finish this whole thing at once, all at once. So I'm going to call that... Uh, Division intents, division intents, and then uh, I'm going to put a backward slash for division sign, subtract, divide, subtraction, division. Uh, sometimes people call what is 7 divided by 8, so let me put the word divided. Uh, and then there's a few other words that uh, imply a division, the word ratio. What's the ratio of 8 and 5? Okay. Um, a less well-known word is uh, the word quotient. So I'm just going to add that. I go to the gear, add one more socket here. Um, so I'm just going to add the word, like what's the quotient of uh, 5 and 3? So I'm going to put the word co Okay. So now we are ready. We have our intents specified. These are all the ways uh, a user can specify that they want to do a subtraction or a division. Now that we got a, a hang of how to do this, so I'm just going to do a lot of copy and pasting. So I'm going to do a copy paste for the first one. Uh, and then I'm going to do another one, copy paste. Um, and uh, instead of uh, addition intents, I'm going to now have uh, subtraction intents for the first one and uh, division intents for the second one. Uh, now for uh, this uh, block, I copy and paste it. And we need to be careful. So uh, instead of saying the word, uh, the sum is, we're going to say uh, the difference is. Uh, and uh, we need to um, replace this uh, addition symbol with a subtraction symbol. So I'm going to uh, put that in the garbage, uh, grab a subtraction symbol, 
uh, I'm going to now put uh, the two uh, numbers back. Uh, and you might remember if this is now going out of the screen, if you click on the uh, blue block, you can have uh, the option of uh, external inputs. So it looks a little bit neater uh, uh, vertically. Uh, and I think you know where this is going. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste again. Uh, this time I'm going to say uh, the quotient, the quotient uh, of uh, blah and blah is, so the quotient is, and again, instead of the subtraction uh, operation, we're going to need to get the division operation from the mat menu. So it is this one right here. So I put the first number in the first socket, the second in the second socket. Uh, I'm going to again have external inputs here so that it looks a little bit neater. Okay. Uh, now that should be it, unless we made a horrible mistake somewhere. I'm just checking to make sure that all the intents are in the correct place. Um, we should be all set. Uh, now remember, uh, if it's not any of these options, so the the you know the voice calculator did not detect a multiplication intent, addition intent, subtraction intent, or a division intent, it will speak the default value, which is I could not understand, okay? For all the operations, uh, let us test that uh, the voice calculator is able to do these operations. So uh, let me get the uh, calculator back here. Uh, and actually we should probably uh, refresh the companion screen just to be uh, sure that it is going to respond to the new code. So uh, we already tested multiplication and addition. So let me try some subtraction and division uh, sentences. What is the difference of five and eight? The difference is minus three. What is 18 minus five? The difference is 13. What's the ratio of 14 and seven? The quotient is 2. What is 4 divided by 8? The quotient is 0 0.5. So as you can see, it is able to now do these uh, operations in addition to the other two operations we already tested. Uh, let's actually check that uh, if I say something unrelated to a mathematical operation, it still doesn't recognize that. So, good morning, how are you? I could not understand. So uh, anything non-mathematical, uh, the voice calculator does not understand. Now, uh, just to clarify a few things uh, in the coding. Now, um, we have here the intents um, specified. And we are sort of like imagining um, a, 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 an English learner. So we are, we are basically creating um, our voice calculator in the model of an English learner where they go to an English speaking country. Uh, you know, the, the speakers that they encounter may say a lot of different words, but it's only a few key words that they recognize might allow them to understand the intent of the speaker. So um, it is uh, actually quite possible to trick the uh, calculator to uh, do a operation like multiplication, even though your intention was not that. For example, uh, you could say it was hard times, and you could say 7 and 11 completely a meaningless sentence, but it will take that to be a multiplication sentence. So let's actually try that and let's try to trick the calculator so you understand uh, the limitations of the AI that we have just uh, created. So let me get uh, the um, app here. Let me refresh the screen. Uh, so let us try to trick the calculator and see uh, if we can succeed. So I'm going to say, it was hard times and seven and five. The product is 35. So it got confused. Uh, the word 
times it didn't understand that I was it was part of the word uh, part of the sentence hard times so it assumed that it it wanted to do some kind of a multiplication uh, and then the words and it uh, assumed uh, you know Google assumed that we want to do some kind of an addition it got uh, pretty confusing so there are limitations of this uh, voice calculator which is always good to know but uh, you should uh, you know realize that it has a specific uh, domain of uh, what it can understand, uh, which is already uh, actually, I think, pretty good. Now, one last thing that I want to uh, uh, explain here or, or bring to your attention is um, when we created this project, we were just thinking it as, a, as an AI project, which it is, uh, but somebody uh, brought to our attention that uh, this is actually an example. Voice Calculator is an example of um, coding uh, an accessibility tool. So uh, if people have uh, visual disabilities uh, or, uh, you know, you can imagine uh, older people uh, who cannot see the screen uh, too, uh, too well, uh, we have created a tool, we have created an app that will allow uh, the uh, visually challenged uh, person to be able to do a mathematical operation without having to punch in uh, keys and numbers. So this is an interesting uh, extension of the project. Now, uh, as a further uh, extensions of uh, the ideas in this project, you might um, you know, consider uh, other types of operation. If you look at a, 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 you know, a handheld calculator, you're going to see there are other buttons there. For example, you know, the square root button or uh, the button to square numbers, cube numbers, etc. Now, if you're going to go that route, you need to notice that uh, those operations are what are called unary operations. Uh, the operations we have seen so far, you know, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, these are binary operations. They need two numbers to operate. Uh, whereas a square root, uh, requires a singleton number as its uh, as its input, so it might be interesting for you to see where in the code you would have to change to be able to um, uh, you know address some of those uh, unary operation uh, constraints. And I'll give you a hint. Uh, at the beginning, remember we were checking if the uh, list, the numbers list, has only two uh, elements in it. Uh, but uh, you could put here easily a, an else statement and check what happens if the you know the number list contain only a single number, and uh, from that you could uh, maybe explore uh, you know these other unary operations. Alrighty, I hope this gave you some idea how uh, you know conversational agents might uh, work, how they understand the intent of uh, the user and how they can try to uh, meaningfully respond to the user. Alrighty, it's been fun. Uh, best of luck. Uh, enjoy.